All right, here we are under the hood of our 2017 Ford Super Duty. We're gonna walk you through the installation process of the brand new EZX module. This is part number 12710, and this will be applicable to the 2017 through 2019 model Super Duty. This works in the F250 and F350 models. The first process to any installation that we do under the hood is to always disconnect the batteries. So we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket and a quarter inch ratchet. We're gonna take off the negative battery terminal from the, the passenger side and the, the driver size battery. All right, so with the batteries disconnected, we can now move on to installing our EZX harness that's supplied with the kit. You can see we've got a, quite the harness here. Some of this will be in the cab of the truck. Some of it will be right here under the hood. So we're gonna start by disconnecting this access link so that we have just the underhood harness here in our hands. This section of it that goes to the CAN bus system, our accelerator pedal, and to the EZX module itself, we'll all go inside the cab. We'll do that in a moment here. All right, so we've got our underhood harness here, and there are three sensors that we are gonna piggyback onto with this harness. Make sure we get this oriented here. So the first step is to connect this pigtail to our mass airflow sensor that's located right here on the back side of the air box. You'll see it right here on the upper portions, really easy to access. You basically have to depress the detent on the bottom side of that pigtail to unplug it. And then our new harness will plug direct in series with that one end together, wait for it to click and then take the other end of that pigtail and plug it into the sensor itself, make sure it clicks, and then close the red locking tab. We'll come back and route these wires at a later point, but now we're gonna move over to the MAP sensor. All right, so the MAP sensor is located right here on the top of the intake manifold plenum, right here below the firewall. That gets access a little bit tight, but you can get your thumb in to depress the tab that's on the side of that MAP connector and then basically wiggle it loose to pull it free. We're gonna find the map sensor pigtail on our underhood harness. We're gonna do the same thing by just piggybacking in series with it. One end into the harness, make sure you hear it snap and that it's a tight connection. And then the other end into the sensor itself. Again, making sure you press firmly and make sure that it snaps into place. And again, we'll work on run, routing these wires in a minute. Now we'll move over to the fuel rail pressure that's located over on the driver's side of the engine. We'll move our camera over for a little better angle of that. All right, so now we've moved over to the driver's side of the engine. We're gonna show you how to locate that fuel rail pressure sensor. Now in the instructions, it states that it's located between your coolant reservoir uh, and the alternator and the front of the engine. So basically, if we peek down right through here, past our power steering reservoir and past the radiator hose, try and get a good, good shot of it here. You can see the light shining on it right, right here on the front of the engine, right beside your alternator. Here it is zoomed in on it. That sensor right here is our fuel rail pressure sensor. We need to disconnect that connector. The detent tab that you need to press to get it to come loose is on the bottom side of that connector, but you can get really easy access to that sensor with your hand just by simply reaching right here between the power steering reservoir and under the coolant hoses. So we can go ahead and get that disconnected and then we will plug in our fuel rail pressure pigtails directly into that harness like we did with our MAP and our MAF sensors. 
So we have now installed our harness into the three sensors here under the hood, and we need to pass our wiring harness through the firewall. We're gonna go through a grommet that's located right here inside the driver's fender. Back on the firewall, next to the brake booster can, there's a big, large grommet that we need to put a little slit in to get our six pin connector through right here in the firewall. We'll move into the cab and show you where that passes through so we can make our final connections in the cab. All right, here we are on the floorboard of the truck. You can see this rubber grommet that's passed through the firewall. This is where we put that slit in the grommet so that we could pass this connector through the firewall. This is our six pin access link. So now we can plug in the rest of our harness directly into this, and then we will plug into our accelerator pedal, our CAN bus line, and then plug in the easy module itself. So here's showing our accelerator pedal positioned pigtail we need to tap into here. This is directly above our throttle pedal. You can see the red keeper here on the side that we just need to lift up to get it to disconnect. We can then depress on the connector and get it to come unplugged. We'll take our in-cab harness for the EZX module. One side will peek back and plug into the pedal itself. Close the keeper. The other side of that harness, we will plug in to the wiring harness of the truck. Again, make sure it clicks. Close the detent. And then we'll move over to getting access onto our OBD2 line for the CAN bus. All right, from this angle, we are looking at the back side of our OBD port. We've got this large connector right on the back of the OBD port. On the bottom side, we can depress with our thumb and we can pull this connector loose, and then we will use the EZX harness to piggy back into its place. Again, one end into the truck's wiring harness, and then the other end will go directly into the truck's connector here, making sure it clicks, we've got a good connection. And then we can make that six pin connector connection that we'd pass. Get that connected, and then our last step is to plug in the EZX module into the main harness. All right, with our pedal connections made and our OBD2 connections made, we're gonna make our last two steps here. We need to plug in our six pin access that came through the firewall. And then we need to take our main EZX module connector and plug the module into it. This will just plug and click. And then there is some double side Velcro um, that will allow us to mount this module up here under the floorboard so it's not dangling at your feet. So all of our wiring connections have been made with our EZX. We just need to reconnect our battery cables. Doing this will allow us to get power to the vehicle, obviously, and then to our EZX module so we can get it set up. At this point, we are done under the hood and we can move into the cab to connect our smartphone to the Bluetooth on the device so that we can set up the EZX app and then we will walk through the steering wheel controls. Okay, so now we need to set up our smartphone app. So once we've downloaded the smartphone app from the Google Play Store or from the App Store through Apple, we've got the app here on our phone. We need to get the key in the ignition. We'll turn the ignition on without starting the truck. And then we can go ahead and open our EZX app. You can see it's gonna start searching for the device. Now our app has located the device that's mounted under the dash. Um, we are about two feet away from that module. If you cannot get your phone to connect, it would help to move the phone closer to that module. 
once it's connected, the, the app should work from anywhere in the cab. So sitting in the driver's seat, you'll have no problem running the app with the vehicle. But at this point, we can kind of walk through the app itself. You can see that we've got our power levels, tire size, gear ratio, TPMS adjustments. We can enable our high beams to stay on with our fog beams. And then we can also turn on our engine coolant protection. So this basically just allows the module to not add any power until you get up to an operating temperature with your coolant. It will also derate power if your coolant temperature gets too hot. So it's just kind of a safety feature that's built in. We can also do a DPF manual regen. We can go in and check our diagnostics. And then we can also set high idle features through the app itself. So with our power levels, uh, this can be controlled through the steering wheel using our cruise control button. So when our cruise control is off, you can use your uh, cruise control up and cruise control down buttons to turn those power levels up and down. But the nice thing with the, the app itself is we can go in to that power level feature. You can see that it's found it. The module is currently in power level five. We can change those power levels here with the app or through the steering wheel. But in the app itself, we can actually go in and edit that power level so we can change the throttle pedal sensitivity of every power level. So if you're someone that likes a really touchy pedal, but you like the lower power levels, we can set level two to have that extreme uh, sensitivity or vice versa. If the extreme setting number five setting power level uh, is a little too touchy for your daily driving, you can go in and turn down the sensitivity of that pedal to any one that you prefer. So that's a, a nice feature that's allowed you to control right here in the app. Once you set that, it will remember it from the uh, moving forward in the future anytime you have the device on and driving the truck. Tire size adjustment. This is so we can calibrate our speedometer for the tire size on the truck. We need to input our stock tire size and then we can input our modified tire size. The one thing to note is that the modified tire size needs to be your exact tire height. So even though this truck is running a 37, 13, 50, Measured with a tape measure, these tires mounted and balanced only stand about 3550 tall. So we need to input that 3550 to get the most accurate speedometer reading. Once we've inputted our stock and our modified tire size, we can tell it to update and then our speedometer should read correctly. Gear ratio, the same thing. If you've changed your ring and pinion because you've put a big set of tires on it, some 40 inch tires, and you've changed from the factory 355 to a 410 or something like that, you can go in and change that gear ratio right here. That's not something that's gonna need to be changed unless you physically change the ring and pinion. Um, the TPMS settings, this is so that we can go in and change the, the threshold at, at what triggers the light on the dash. So if you've installed that aftermarket set of wheels and tires, we can go in and change what PSI we want that threshold to be set at. So instead of having the factory, I believe it's 65 PSI, you can turn that down a bunch to change that. We can also disable the TPMS settings altogether. So if your aftermarket wheel and wheels and tires don't have TPMS sensors in them, we can turn that system off altogether so that there's no light on the dash at any time. We talked about the fog beams with our highs. We talked about engine cold protection, DPF regen. We can go in and do a manual regen process. And then our diagnostics will go in and read and clear any trouble codes that are in the truck. So if you have a check engine light that pops up, you can use this device to read what that code is. Um, we can also check our emissions readiness. So if you're somewhere that does emissions testing, uh, you can go in and check this and it'll let you know if it, the emissions readiness monitors are set in the vehicle. So before you get to your emissions testing center, you know that all of the, the check sums are ready so that they can test it properly and you don't have to come back or drive the vehicle a bunch more miles to get those to set before you do your testing. It's a really nice feature. And then we've got our high idle. With this feature, we can enable the high idle when the, it, when the truck is in park. Um, we can change the high idle settings. So if it's a cold winter, cold morning, you can actually manual idle up that engine to let it run. And then just depressing the brake will turn that uh, high idle off. All right, so changing power levels and the high idle feature through the steering wheel is very simple. So when we're driving the truck, as long as our cruise control is disabled, uh, you can use your set plus and your set minus buttons on the steering wheel to turn the power levels up and down. The dash will display the power level that you're running and you can see it change as you're pressing the buttons to change power levels. And then anytime the vehicle is in park, we're not driving, the set plus and set minus buttons will actually enable cruise control, or I'm sorry, uh, high idle feature. So if you're in a cold climate, want the engine to warm up and to get the, the in-cabin heat blowing 
hotter sooner, we can idle the, in, the engine up to a higher RPM. Same thing in the summer climate, if you want that AC to start blowing cold, we can idle up. And then anytime we depress the brake pedal, it'll automatically disable that high idle feature and go back to its regular idle. So that kind of walks you through the installation and all the feature sets of the Easy X and the app. It's very user friendly, easy to install. Um, really for a first timer, this is a 20, 30 minute install. It's all direct plug and play. There's no modifications that need to be made to the vehicle. And because we're not flashing the ECM, this works really well for a new vehicle that's still got uh, dealer services that need to be done. If you ever need to remove the EZX, it's as simple as just unplugging those connectors, plugging everything back in as stock and there's no trace left in the system. So this product was developed for the average diesel owner, daily driver, someone that does a lot of towing. Um, you know, it's a modest 60 horsepower gain, but it's definitely something you'll feel from the driver's seat. I mean, towing a heavy load, the improvement in throttle pedal sensitivity, and that low end torque is something you will definitely notice when you're driving the vehicle. You may even see some fuel mileage improvements if your driving habits don't change, which can be tough when you get that extra power. A lot of guys want to use more throttle. But as long as you keep your driving habits consistent, your regen frequency and your fuel mileage should stay the same as stock, if not better in some situations. Um, you can also pair the EZX with our Insight CTS3, so you can keep an eye on what's going on under the hood, keep an eye on your EGTs, your DPF regens, all that kind of stuff. So the Insight does work in conjunction with the EZX. They do not work together, so there's no uh, functionality through the Insight that controls the EZX. It's, the EZX is still controlled just through your steering wheel or through the app, but pairing it with an Insight does give you some nice visibility of what's going on with the truck. Um, so we do sell that as a kit, the EZX and the Insight together. It does also include the A-pillar mount that holds the Insight, um, but we do sell the EZX as a standalone unit for those guys that don't want the monitor or for the guys that already have a monitor. Um, they do work really well together. The other thing to note is that this product is kind of catered for that average owner that just wants a little bit more out of their vehicle. It really changes the way it drives. The throttle pedal sensitivity and that low end torque, it just makes the vehicle feel lighter, accelerates better. I mean, daily driving, it's a whole new vehicle. You will definitely feel a difference. Um, so this part number, the 12710, is specific to the 2017 through 2019 models, but we will have 2020 through 2021 SKU available, and then we will also have 2022 coverage coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you have any other questions, obviously feel free to reach out to our Edge Products tech support um, or visit us on social media, or even stop by your local authorized Edge Products dealers for more information about the EZX. Uh, we always love getting feedback and we look forward to hearing from you.